Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry. And as you can see that land behind me, that is the island of Curaçao, which is just off of the coast of Venezuela. And one thing that's always seemed strange to me is that these three islands near here, Curaçao, Aruba, Bonaire, are actually considered officially to be part of North America, not South America, even though they're just a few miles <laughs> off of the coast of South America. So today is my first port tour. I'll be taking a ride around Curaçao to see the sights and I'll video what I think is most interesting to show you. So come along with me on this tour. I'm on the upper deck of the ship here and let me zoom in on the islands to See a close-up of what they look like as we are just pulling into port at the city of Williamstead, I think is how they pronounce it. There's some things there. See what else we can see if I zoom in as far as I can here. I don't know what I'm going to see today. You and I will find out at the same time <laughs> what Curaçao looks like. So far not too exciting. Let's see what it looks like up close when I get on the tour. We'll have a tour guide. Well now that we have moved a lot closer into the land I can see a lot more detail of the buildings there. That's a lot of buildings. I wonder if it's all residential or commercial or what. Up on the hill are some antennas there. Oil tanks or something. And over here is what looks like a couple smokestacks there are a couple other cruise ships that are already docked Let's see what else there's a big road bridge so it looks like it's an industrial area and residence what is this a pirate ship coming to attack us? <laughs> I hope it's just an official guide boat. You know what? I heard that when these big cruise ships come in a lot of places they don't allow the captains to guide the boat into the dock. A pilot like that comes on board and he takes control of the wheel. They don't trust the ship captain to dock safely. Interesting. And here is a much closer up shot. There's a ship dock. I thought we were going to land there, but we're just passing it by. Going to another one somewhere along here. And there is a some kind of a sports park. I think and over here is a hotel with its own beach but it doesn't go out to the ocean interesting they have all that you're not gonna get any waves in there <laughs> there's the other ship so I guess we're going somewhere over there. There's the big road bridge that grows across a waterway. Oh, I see. Now we are actually going into this dock sideways. <laughs> the whole ship is just inching towards the dock here. And I'm betting we can spend some money right here without having to go into town. How convenient. 
The tour bus took us on a long drive to this beach that's called the Casabo. The tour is called the Historical Willemstad with a cave and a beach stop. It's got one of these signs with all these cities. Fort Worth, Texas, 2286 miles from here. <laughs> There's a canyon side wall right here. It's a nice place. Nice beach. Really nice sand too. And the water looks nice and clean. It is particularly nice sand. And look at this. That outcropping of rock there. It's a nice scene along the canyon wall. It's a nice warm day. I'll be going in the water in a little while. They gave us an hour to stay here. We've got a bar and a restaurant and a spa. Sign says people having fun in the water. Here's an unusual tree, right near the water. There's a boat out there. I like the way the sun glistens on the water there. There's the beach rules. I wonder what this is behind that cage. It's a big hole, but I can't tell what it's for. <laughs> There's the boat. There's a picnic table under the trees, right beside the canyon side. The canyon wall. Really nice beach. And here is the left end of the beach. Definite end right there. We zoom down the beach here. There's the other end. There's the massage hut. They have kayaks designed for the ocean and surfboards that you can rent. Over down at this end by that rock outcropping, there is a little cave. Just goes a little ways here, but that's one place you can sit where nobody can see you, <laughs> except somebody swimming right there. The guy told me that there's rocks like this all around the coast. There is a lot of people here today. This is on a Wednesday. There's some guys here playing paddle ball. So this is our next stop to see what's called the Hot Toe Cave. Can you figure out these drawings to mean that? <laughs> Those things? <laughs> well, they got some nice landscaping here. Oh, look at that, a plane taking off. It's right near the airport. Another place with some rock canyon side. You have to go up these steps. 49 steps, he said, to get up to the cave entrance.
This is a warm cave, so they have a lot of fans all throughout the cave. It does have normal cave formations. Not a whole lot of them, but it does have some stalagmites and stalactites. There's a natural entrance. And what I told you, bats like to be together. When you see a group, a bunch, a plant, sometimes you're going to see the cockroaches. Keep the cave clean because it is the best food. A place to stay. They never leave that place. So they can for the flowers before daylight, they go back to the chamber. There's some stalag kites. Well, that's the end of the cave tour. And you can see the ocean. Thank you so much. Right there. Thank you. Have a nice day. That's how close it is to the ocean. 170 feet. There's my ship. This is about the highest. And here's the one that's parked sideways. This is from the top of that big bridge I showed you in the beginning from the ship. And we are going to take you to the right inside the oldest part of our And here's all of the buildings, residences it looks like mostly. And oh well, there's an IMAX theater. Now the capital of Hiramstad started at the Dutch population of the island, island is about 160,000 people. Immediately this street for that reason is the Scardo Road. Well to do merchants. Can you imagine living in such a house? I would love to purchase one if I had the funds. Nowadays you will find to the left the consulate of Venezuela, the greyish one, a museum of money. Coming up to the left, it says Stichting Monumentosorg, which means Monument Foundation. So this is where all the decisions are made concerning the restoration of these houses were built according to Dutch architecture mainly, but adapted to our climate. Now, what are the adaptions? First of all, when you enter such a building, you will notice that the ceilings are extremely high. By doing so, the rooms will be cooler, more appropriate for our climate. Also, no glass windows but wooden shutters. If my if not the ceilings. Have a look to the left hand side. You see the, the statue of the lady? You see the statue of the one that made the arch. So that's completely made of star of car bumpers. Now, another thing I'd like to mention are the decorations above the doors. We call them rosettes or medallions. Now, there was an eagle or a tiff. The, they were made, these holes, to let the air go through underneath the roof once again in order to cool the rooms. So then, once they decided to decorate the... Now, if you look to the left-hand side, the yellow... Now, the yellow building on the right-hand side, you, the buildings on the right-hand side, these are not really interesting to see. These are schools, actually. And Not least, we're going to make a, a brief stop in front of, I think, one of the most beautiful, typical houses of this road. It's a green and white one to the left-hand side. This used to be a home. What about? <laughs> so, um, it was built in 1916. 
And uh, the owner, he built this for his daughter, who was to be married. Now, if you look above the poles, the pillars, you will see the face of a lady. You see them? So actually, these are supposed to be the face, it's supposed to be the face of his wife. Nowadays, everything is digitalized. And if you enter the building, there is a beautiful, the, the ceiling is beautifully painted. You get out the, the, the salt completely. And you know what salt does? It absorbs water, moist. And for that reason, the paint will always feel. So if you purchase a monumental building, you will have to paint your building continuously. So every year? Yeah, okay. yes, definitely. If you want to keep it well maintained. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I'm very happy that um, if the story is uh, true or not, it's very colorful. That's fact. Okay, we're not going to take you to your ship um, as yet. We are going to sp um, spend another five to seven minutes because we're going to take you along the other side of the St. Anna Bay, on this side of, of the capital. Because about four to five years ago, some of these monumental buildings have rooms for rent and quite a few are still owned by the owners as a home. To the right is a small restaurant, really nice, in the typical state. And the uh, purple one coming up is going to be a restaurant. So once again, these are all monuments. And if you look, um, there's a plaque, a plaque there on one of the pillars. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed those three parts of my tour of Curaçao. I found it interesting turning around the city and seeing those interesting historical buildings. And this is the ship that I'm on, the Holic America. And they put the ship name on the side in the middle, the new Stuttendam. Leave some comments below. Good day, folks.